the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries in order to express our love for God and realize how much God loves us and graces us with that love so that we can prioritize our entire lives according to his will and be obedient to the laws that are set before us. Let us first of all start with humility and asking for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord, and there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one cut into pieces and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but shall start no fire. You shall call on your gods and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but do not start the fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over to them, they prepared it and called on Baal from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound, and no one answered. And they hopped around the altar, they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them, call louder, for he is a god, and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was not a sound. No one answered, and no one was listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took twelve stones, for the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, Your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with the stones, and made a trench around the altar, large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Fill four jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. 
The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with the water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me that this people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trenches. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. They multiply their sorrows who court other gods. Blood libations to them I will not pour out, nor will I take their names upon me. Keep me safe, O God, you are my Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you it is who fast my lot, who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in their presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, O God, and guide me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. There are many powerful things to reflect on in the readings today, but at first I start off focusing on the responsorial psalm because it sounds like a response that we probably want to say every day in this time of pandemic, in this time of awareness of prejudice and violence. Keep me safe, O oh God. You are my hope. And so it's important for us to do the right thing and to find ways to be safe. In this pandemic, we have been given clear instructions. Some people call it a fluke, some people call it a hoax, some people don't want to take the chance that it's a hoax or a reality. If you talk to the priests and the ministers who have buried the dead of people with COVID, it's no hoax. But we've been given clear instructions, keep a social distance, wear your mask, do things that help 
us to be sterile and safe and, and clean. So our God is our hope for eternal salvation, and the rules and the laws and the recommendations are our hope for um, living a safe life today. The readings affirm that in a sense of both the Old Testament reading from the Book of Kings and the detail about the conflict between the God of Israel and the God of Baal. And the detail that the prophet goes through to say, I will show you the God of Israel is the God to pay attention to. And he gives clear instructions to the prophets of Baal and says, go ahead, but bring no fire. And he even taunts them. <laughs> I took my honor pill not too long ago, a couple days ago, and I've been honoring as I'll get out in the last couple days. And it seemed like the prophet the same way. Come on, come on. You got to wake up your God. Make sure you get him going. But then the prophet says, all right, you've done your part. Let me show you the God of Israel. And goes through all the detail. And even the detail of showing how it's going to be difficult to start a fire when you dump three loads of water on the, the bull as well as the sticks. And yet it is the God of Israel that starts the fire and consumes the sacrifice. Are we living a life today that we need that kind of sign again? I'll know I'm doing the right thing, Lord, if you just give me some dramatic sign that I need to pay attention to you. This has been given to us through millennia. And yet, do we place our focus on the Lord? Now, all of you who are watching either through multimedia or who are here today, I'm preaching to the choir. I do that a lot. But the reality is, is all of us need to be reinforced in our sense of trusting God. And all of us need to be encouraged to share the good news and encourage others to place God first. The gospel today is a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount, which is a powerful part of the whole scripture. If you only read the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel, you've got a great grasp of the whole message of Jesus. But in today's gospel, he says, do you think I've come to abolish the law? No, I'm not going to abolish the law. I'm going to fulfill it. And in my fulfillment, I call you to be obedient, not only to the general law, but to the minute detail of the law. And when we think of the law, for example, in the Ten Commandments, to keep holy the Sabbath, are we fulfilling? Are we being obedient? Sure, the church in this pandemic has said, there is no obligation under the penalty of sin if you don't come to Mass. But does that give people the permission to go golfing or go fishing or go shopping or go do other things rather than even sit down for 45 minutes, half hour, to pray as family the Holy Eucharist? One of my fears with the pandemic and the response to the pandemic is that people are going to get used to not coming to church. And they're going to say, well, why did yesterday I have no obligation to celebrate Mass on Sunday, but now today I have an obligation to celebrate Mass on Sunday? My smart aleck response is, because it's the law. The law of the church says to do so. And Jesus in the gospel today said, obey the law. But the greater challenge for all of us, especially as Catholics, is to ask ourselves the question, how do I relate to Jesus, my Savior? We do it through scripture, which is very similar to our Christian brothers and sisters in other denominations. The scripture teaches us and leads us to a relationship with Jesus. But as Catholics, the Eucharist is the source and the summit of who we are as disciples of the Lord. 
Jesus gave the commandment. Eat my body, drink my blood. Do this in memory of me. Did he come to abolish the law? Or to fulfill it? Are we reflecting in our own lives our desire to fulfill the command of Jesus? To receive Holy Communion? Again, I'm speaking to the choir. Those of you who are here are doing that because you want to receive and to be in communion with your God. But you and I all know that there are plenty of even Catholics who say they're Catholics that don't believe in the real presence. And it's going to be a challenge for them to come back and say, yeah, I desire to go to the Holy Eucharist to celebrate Mass. I desire to do that because I want to be in communion with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. So we all must share our faith and share our desire for oneness with the Lord so that that can spread throughout the community, so that can spread throughout our Catholicism and maybe spread throughout the world. The most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul. And we as Catholics reflect that in a very clear way by celebrating the Eucharist, living a life faithful so that we can receive communion. So Jesus has come to take us to the promise of heaven. The response tells us, he responds, keep us safe, O Lord, because our hope is in you. May our hope be eternal in the scriptures and in the Eucharist. And may we rejoice in the strength that it gives us to love one another. Let us stand and offer our prayers of petition. For great appreciation of the sacred sacrament which we celebrate, particularly the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord As we prepare to celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, this coming weekend, that we may focus on and see the value of the body of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our own Bishop Joseph, and all church leaders will be open to and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For President Trump and for all leaders of nations, that they make wise decisions and work together for the common good of humanity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have died, that they may know the fullness of the kingdom, the fulfillment of the law, and that those who are grieving may be consoled, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, that they may see in their parents, their grandparents, and the adults in their lives a witness to Christ Jesus and come to know and be curious about a relationship with the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are impoverished, those who are in, in prison, those who are prejudiced against, that in their suffering they may know God's presence is with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety from the coronavirus, for safety from diseases, social diseases in particular, for safety from storms, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and powerful God, we have voiced many needs. We hold many more in our hearts. Hear them all and grant them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine that we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the souls of the church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we praise, and we have the Spirit upon them like you, Father, that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis I, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Leo, our patron, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we now have the courage and the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Safely share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, who can take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to take you to the shepherd of my life, but only say a word, and my soul shall be For Holy Communion, we'll start with this side over here. Again, come forward to keep the distance when this side is done, then we'll move over to this side to come down in line. body of Christ. body Christ.
For those of you who are at home, let us pray together the spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Enjoy today. You too, Father. Heavenly Father, bless our diocese with the grace of many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Through the intercession of the Blessed Mother, grant to those who call the willingness and generosity of spirit to give themselves in devoting their lives and their talents to the service of our Lord and to his church. Increase the faith of all within our diocese and especially the faith of those you are calling. We ask this through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.